Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Lost Odyssey. In the last episode we ran a bunch of side quests and broke a couple royal seals as well as installed the first two magic gauges that we had got from the technician at the Grand Staff construction base. Let's see, we visited the Goats and Refugee Camp. Uh, we installed a magic gauge at the Black Cave and we installed a magic gauge at the Ice Canyon. And uh, yeah, so now we are at the Ypsilon Mountains. And oh, and we also went to the Burning Limestone Cave. Uh, and we broke a royal seal there as well. So now we are at the Ypsilon Mountains. We entered from the south side so that we can make this a little bit quicker. <clears throat> So go ahead and run forward. Ooh, I think I'm gonna like this. jump over the crate and climb the first ladder that you come to head over and can climb the next ladder south and climb another ladder and a little bit north <clears throat> climbing a bunch of ladders here all right so I think that was the last ladder now, once you climb the fourth ladder, go ahead and head south. Now, notice there's a guy standing here. Um, he's on a, uh, a platform pretty high up on the mountain. Go ahead and talk to him. And his name is Wandering Blacksmith Law. says that the mountain used to be famous for being rich in ore and he used to come here to get components for smithing when he was young but now all the uh, resources have been lined out for the construction of grand staff so he might not seem too important right now because uh, if you talk to him again he just says the same stuff but mark my words, remember where this guy's at for later. Because he's going to be very important. But for now, just remember where he's at on the south, by the south entrance to the Ypsilon Mountains. When you're done, go ahead and exit south. And follow the path around. I'm always 
always ready. And I'm trying to get there as fast as possible. I was gonna edit all this out, but it takes so long to do all that, I can just play through. Maybe next time. You guys got a fast forward button, you can skip ahead a couple minutes. <laughs> save me the hassle because <laughs> trust me a hundred episodes of let's play lost odyssey and i have to edit on top of it oh man that's gonna take forever it's hard enough putting my voice in here <laughs> oh come on give me a break and i know you guys love my lovely voice <laughs> Even though I am kind of sick right now, I'm still trying to get over that. I've been sick for the last uh, 10 Maybe or 15 episodes. <laughs> Started off with a sore throat, and now it's like I got an ear infection, which really sucks. If you guys know what an ear infection is, then you know it really sucks. And it hurts, it's painful. So continue following the mountain path around and hopping over rocks. And once you reach the peak, you're at the right spot. So go ahead and head over to where you fought the boss battle with Rilgan. Way back on disc one. Back in the good old days. And Cook will point out that this is a place uh, for another magic gauge that we need to install. <clears throat> so go ahead and install that. And once you got that sucker down, go ahead and head all the way back down the mountain. We came all the way up here to install a freaking magic gauge. Good lord. Technician at Grand Staff, man, he asked us to do a lot. He better reward us with something good for all this shit. Two full episodes of just installing magic gauges. <laughs> Let's take a bow. But that was uh, Magic Gauge number three, by the way, of four. So we only got one more left to go. Maybe next time. Climb back down all these ladders again. This takes a good five minutes here. <laughs> you no, know, I really wish they made an accessory that uh blocks the encounters to where you can no, make it out. to where you don't uh get into any random encounters like on Final Fantasy X or all the older Final Fantasies and all the older RPG games in general. There was a certain accessory that you could equip it and 
as long as you had the accessory on, you wouldn't get into any random battles. Maybe next time. I so wish they had one of them uh, for this game. on the ground go ahead and jump back over the gap and exit the Ypsilon mountains uh, through the south exit again and you should be back on the world map now we're gonna go ahead and head back to the city of Ura gate go ahead and talk to the taxi guy and go to Ura Castle Station the taxi cabs are much more convenient by the way a lot more quicker to get around Ura. So after you rode the taxi cab to the um, castle station, go ahead and take the west exit to the uh, the monorail castle station and head over to the pipit in this area. And of course it's going to be very excited because it wants the solid seed. So go ahead and give it to him. And it will give you a tough seed. So now the tough seed, if you check uh, the item description, it goes to the uh, Pippet in Numara. Numara. Um, so we can't get there right at this time because our ship won't fly through the hypercurrents, and unfortunately, we're tossed on the outer part. So we can't really get on the inside anywhere. But we will be able to go there here soon. So for now, just go ahead and exit back to the uh, castle station square. And jump on a taxi. And head to the central station square. So now, we're at the Central Station Square. Go ahead and exit to the east so that we will be on Main Street. And we're heading for Gongora's Mansion. Because I don't know if you remember, um, but besides the magic uh, gauges that we have to install, there was another technician at the Grand Staff Construction Base and he asked us to get some magic capsules from Gongoro's mansion. So go ahead and head over to the uh, mansion so that we can hurry up and get these three magic capsules out of the way. And we should be done with these silly side quests. Talk to the guard to enter the mansion. 
we got much more important side quests we need to be doing besides silly stuff like this. Uh, let's go ahead and enter the east hallway and head to the very end and look on one of the little machines for a glowing item. Press A and examine it for a key item called the magic capsule. And then go ahead and take the west doorway. Alright, and in the northwest corner of the uh, magic research lab is a glowing item. And this is another magic capsule. Go ahead and uh, exit to the west. Don't go up the elevator, just exit the doorway to the west hallway of the mansion. And then exit the west door to the courtyard. And we are now going to enter this bonus dungeon. The secret cave. You want to get a bunch of goodies. So first of all, head directly south. As soon as you wrap around, you'll see a bunch of empty chests. And further south of that is a ladder we can descend that has a pot beneath it that we can probe for a Flaris bomb. Once we got that, go ahead and climb back up the ladder and head over to the east area and press A to jump a gap and you should see a valve a little bit to the north go ahead and press A to turn the valve and this will shut the steam off and then a little bit south from there is a ladder we can descend and head around to find a pot that we can probe For 5,000 G. And go ahead and head back over to the ladder and climb it. And just to the right of the ladder we just descended, uh, there is another valve we can turn. And then further east of that is another gap we can jump. Now immediately after jumping the gap, head north and you'll see a wall that has a bunch of cracks in it. Now this should give uh, the give a clue away that there's something behind it. All you gotta do is go up to it and press A to ram the wall and it'll fall down. Monsters here will give you some pretty good experience if you want to go ahead and fight them. Especially if you're like at, at level uh, 40 or something like that. I believe you can get up to about like level 47, maybe even higher, maybe 50, I don't know. I know I did it one game back before I knew about the uh, quick way to level up. And the quickest way to level up in the early levels that'll quickly get you up to 49 is at Numara at all. So in case you guys missed that episode and you're trying to wonder how I 
got quickly up to level 50 with everybody all you gotta do is go to Namara at all which unfortunately we can't go to right now but we'll be able to go there later so uh, don't worry about it if you're under level and you don't wanna waste your time in this dungeon fighting these guys because we'll be able to get your level back on track here soon but for now behind the broken wall that we just ran is a chest and this contains a seed after we've got that out of the way go ahead and head south out of my way getting pretty annoying so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change that right now put the skill um, on the set if you don't have it already um, actually we can go ahead and use the slot seed now that we've got a bunch from the uh, from the backyard Yeah, we can use that. We can give each of our characters two to balance them out. And go ahead and uh, set the skill Annie Petrify, if you have it, which you should, onto Seth. Or whoever is going to be your main turn tail guy if you're running like me from battles. That way you don't uh, get accidentally stoned turn to stone and it might cost you a game over but after that go ahead and ignore the magic barrier for now and continue south and you'll come to a valve turn off the steam and then head east and you'll come to another valve go ahead and turn that off too Turning this valve off will uh, reveal an item from the pipe, and it is a grounded bomb. Then go ahead and head east at the cross. No one gets in my way. That's shut off to send the ladder that's to the south. And at the bottom of the ladder is a pot we can probe. That contains six magic crystals. <clears throat> so now that we got that item, go ahead and ascend the ladder. back west and then north 
Now before going through the door, check directly to the west for a completely hidden path that heads a little bit west and then north. And it's completely hidden from view, but at the end of the path is a chest we can open that contains the key item magical lock key. Hmm, I wonder what this is for. You'll find out soon enough. Go ahead and enter the door to the east. Taking candy from a baby. And notice at the end of the battle that you will get the backyard weekly key item. <clears throat> which lets you uh, take on a new division in the backyard battles arena. Just a side note, because a lot of people don't notice where they get the backyard weekly from. It's from that battle there. So coming down here was very important. <laughs> and uh, notice just a little bit to the east is a glowing item. Go ahead and check that for the third magic capsule, the last one we needed. And to the uh, west of that is another glowing object we can examine for three pendulums. <laughs> Finally, on the southeast side of the room is a trash can we can kick for a goddess medicine. And now if you notice at the northeast corner of this room, there is a orange dot on your map. And you know what that orange dot means. It's a treasure treasure hunting time so go ahead and walk up to it and press A for the demon king's horn and the demon king's ring very good stuff what you can go ahead and do is equip the skill 
or set the skill um black staff with Sarah and you can go ahead and equip that new uh that new uh staff the demon king's horn which is a pretty wicked staff equip that onto Sarah and the ring's not that bad either So after that's taken care of, go ahead and examine this uh, glowing orb here for a scene. I have been sent on a mission. I'm not from this world. However, I've been sent to investigate this world. I have teleported across time and space. My consciousness continued even after I took on a physical form, and remains to this day. My home world and this world, for some reason, the two worlds seem to be linked on the same axis across space and time. Our world is becoming extremely unstable. Reports have begun to circulate that it would collapse. We believe this to be caused by interference from another world. This world, that was on the same axis as ours. Our pure and tarnished world was being warped and distorted by some unknown force, not unlike a virus distorting a living being. Over the course of time, we realized that this virus could well be a soul or spirit. The interference from that other world was from the souls of its inhabitants. They were producing some form of energy that was distorting our world. Why did it have such an influence? To understand the cause of this phenomenon, to study this interference, we established a quantum teleporter, a means to send our consciousness to this other world. And so we came to investigate. Including myself, there are five investigators. The others are Kai Argonar, Seth Lombard, Ming Numara, and Sarah Sisolard. We arrived here without memories of our home world, and now live among the native inhabitants of this world while we carry out our mission. A thousand years was chosen as a time frame sufficient to develop a deep understanding of this world's inhabitants. The way we arrived, with our memories locked away, has allowed us to become like the people we now live among. However, I awoke to the memory of this mission some days ago. I am leaving this recording so that this world may know that I existed, given that time flows differently on the two worlds. We shall appear to neither age nor die in this world. The thousand years of our investigation is equivalent to the passing of only a single year on our own world. With the difference in the flow of time, we live much longer lives than those around us. By immersing ourselves in the history, culture, thoughts, and habits of this world, we succeeded in gathering detailed data. We will transmit our experiences to our own world in the hopes that it will give us the means of saving it. An unexpected result of our mission is that the Tower of Mirrors is causing a variety of odd changes in the natural order of this world. Wild animals run amok, and there are many sightings of monstrous creatures. The natural magic energy of this world has changed. This may in fact be a blessing. Magic energy has dramatically improved the lives of these people. When our consciousness was reconstituted within our new bodies, there was a resonance with the magic energy. The possibility that our existence has imparted even greater strength to this world's magic energy is very likely. We have seen much in our thousand years here, which brings us to the true nature of the virus. The lives and history of the people here are extremely ordinary, and we have seen many dynasties rise to power and fall again into oblivion, as if they were nothing but trivial occurrences. And yet the existence of the virus on our world shows that the events of this world had a tremendous impact, making a history that will never be recorded in any book here. Their feelings that dominate the minds of the people of this world, their hopes and desires, their love and their hatred, their very lives and deaths, the events that bring fear or happiness to their every moment, all of these resulted in massive waves of something.
that interfered with our own world. The hearts and minds of the people is what moves this world. At certain times, this was evident by the feelings of affection toward others. At other times, it was shown by the unrestrained drive to satisfy a great ambition. In the time we have lived among the people of this world, we have realized that these feelings, previously unknown to us, profoundly affect them. And the effects of these feelings are causing the massive energy waves that are affecting our home world. From our standpoint, these feelings are simply a virus. But in the course of a thousand years, we have found them to be a very seductive virus. While here in this world, I have been infected by the virus of feeling and have consequently attained powerful magic energy. To abandon this would be grievous and painful. To even think this way shows how deeply the virus has infected me. But the virus's seduction has been quite satisfying. And it still is. Alright, so uh, that gives you a lot of information on the story. Uh, we now know why Gongora is planning on taking over the world and why he wants to stay here and not go back to his own home world. Um, and it also tells us why they came here in the first place. So that was a very big, um, a very eventful uh, story that Gongora just that we just found out from reading Gongora's spear, and it fills in the blanks a lot. So you gotta watch out for little things like that because that's what pieces the story together. A lot of people just skip through and don't really pay attention to what they're saying. But that gives up gives us a lot of information on why Kaim and all the other immortals came here in the first place. So after all that's taken care of, go ahead and exit the mansion. And head back into the city of Ura. Exit the uh, the city of Ura and head back to the world map. So go ahead and uh, find a taxi. The closest one is at the central uh, station square. Ride it to the great gate. And with all those side quests out of the way, um, that's going to conclude this episode of Let's Play Lost Odyssey. And I'll see you guys next time where we continue these uh, long line of side quests, which is coming to an end. We are almost ready to uh, head back into the story and progress. It's been about four or five, maybe even six episodes. <laughs> so I know you guys are looking forward to getting back to the story. But we have just a few more side quests we got to finish up. So I'll see you guys next time on the next episode of Let's Play Lost Odyssey.